Hi, welcome back to Mike's Diabetes World. Okay. Current blood sugar, 10.2. Not great when you see all the corrections. But it just kept it up around 10.2 all day. And you know, this isn't a great number. Now, for myself, my endocrinologist and diabetic nurse are probably going to say, oh, look at that. Isn't that so much better than being low all the time? Well, true, it is, but I don't like 10.2. I want to be, let's say, around 8. That I feel a lot better than 10.2. So we need to either change carb ratio or change my basal rate. I don't know. But this to me isn't the greatest. Time and range, 36%. That means 64% of the time I was higher than 10. Average sugar is 10.3. Later after doing this video, I'm going to go check to see what my time and range since going on the new pump is going to look like. Hmm. Today, I want to take a look at Diabetic Heal Thyself. This is taken off the old adage Physicians heal thyself. We'll be right back and we'll begin our day. This channel is provided for informational purposes only. Contact your physician for any diagnostic or treatment plan. Okay, when I was first diagnosed, diabetics were kind of just given the key, I've said this before, given the keys to your diabetes and told to go out and Take care of your own diabetes. Come and see the doctor every six months and he will adjust the road plan and then you have to go out and do it all. You weren't really told how to do it all, but your blood sugars always had to be perfect. And if they weren't, oh, you're cheating, aren't you? You're eating something you shouldn't have. If you were going low, oh, well, you're just uh, not following the plan. You're giving too much insulin. It wasn't till the advent of glucometers that 
diabetics could really take hold of their own blood sugars and try to bring their blood sugars down and watch and monitor. Tighter control was possible. Now, doing this without the guidance of your doctor is pure stupid. Your doctor should give a plan of what to do when you're low, what to do when you're high, and anything in between. With pumps now, most doctors will give, sorry, pumps, will give a basal rate. And my pump takes that basal rate and gives us more sugars or more insulin to cover sugars. It'll also hold back. So it's trying to mimic what a pancreas does. It doesn't call itself a pancreas, it calls itself a closed loop system. Now, you could go off and do things as best as you can do, and you still end up with numbers that are way out there. Well, you know, that is time you need to contact. If you have a diabetic nurse, get a hold of him or her. Doctor, same difference. If you follow the plan set by your doctor and it's not working, let them know. Just don't sit there and say, oh, it's not working, oh, it's not working, and end up in the hospital. Recently here, I kept doing that, I, but I did it with the advice of my diabetic nurse, who we kept upping the insulin to cover these high, high blood sugars. And I'm talking, I was hitting over 33.3. So don't say, well, he took high amounts of insulin and that was great. Well, what eventually happened is I was in DKA. So don't, don't settle. But on the other hand, don't try to do it all yourself. Ask for help when you feel it's appropriate. You should always be able to have a dialogue with your doctor. And when I say that, I also mean be truthful with them, saying I had a big meal that day, I didn't count carbs, that's why I was high that day. But don't hide. And this comes from the mystique that as a diabetic, you have to do it all on your own. And the pressure to do that was immense. You faltered if you got sick, you faltered if you went low. Oh, the doctor gave you insulin. You should be perfectly controlled now. In theory, that's great. And an awful lot of diabetics can do that, and kudos to you. But for those who can't, it's not bad to ask for help. Don't feel that you're so afraid to go see your endocrinologist. If you were so afraid to go to your endocrinologist, you need to look and say, why? And you need to go 
and find out can you get another endo? Go to Diabetes Education Clinic. I know back when I was in my tweens, no, not tweens, sorry, early 20s, I was suggested I go to St. Paul's Hospital Diabetic Daycare. And I went there and I thought, yeah, right, I've had diabetes. I know everything. I don't need to hear anything more. I hate to say it, but the doctors were right. I did learn a lot. And you always have to be open. Now, if you've gone to it, Two months ago, you may not need to go again. But if you haven't been in years, it may be something you need to speak with your doctor about. Now they give you so much more tools for you to identify when is it a medical emergency and when do you need to get help. So often... Diabetics will put it off, put it off, and end up in the hospital. I was lucky. I found an employer who understood that if I had to call in sick because I had a severe low blood sugar, then that was fine. But it's important that you not use your diabetes as sort of like a block from a real world. And I say that for don't start using diabetes as an excuse. Oh, I can't do that assignment now. You know, I just had a low, oh, I don't feel well. If things happen and you're not feeling great, by all means. But don't call off sick. Don't say you can't do anything because you have diabetes. What's that? There it goes. You know, we all want to do it, but those of you who take it and work with it and come up with little schemes to, that's not going to help you. That's going to end up hurting you. There was this guy, Jake, I think his name was. He ended up in the hospital. And he was, I was about 18. He was about 9 or 10. He seemed to be a little squirt. But he was, he was an all right kid. Anyway. He would use his diabetes to get what he wanted out of his parents. And what would end up happening is he would always end up back in the hospital. And I said to him one day, is that how you want to live your life? Hiding behind your diabetes? Life is tough enough. If you always use excuses, you're not going to amount to much. And he pondered. And he said, yeah, you're right. I don't know how the story ends. But don't use your diabetes as an example 
are not an example of an excuse for you to not take a part in life, not have fun activities. If you're going to use diabetes that way, you're going to find that you're going to be crippled by diabetes. And diabetes isn't meant to be a crippling agent. And we think, well, yeah, then it shouldn't raise the blood sugar. But what I mean is this guy up here telling you to hide behind your low blood sugars. Oh, you get special attention. That's not going to work out, though. On the other hand, if you need to be in the hospital, you can be in the hospital. But don't just try to prolong your life in the hospital because of a bad life at home or um, bad relationships, bad work environment. You need to talk to someone, a social worker, to help you bypass these things. So, how do you take care of yourself? One, you monitor your blood sugars. Two, you correct your insulin as per your doctor's suggestions. Three, you may have a GP, which is great, and you may have the best GP ever, but you need to have an endocrinologist and in turn, a diabetic nurse. You need to have that backing. They can come up with plans that can work for you. You need to watch what you eat, make sure you have sensible diets and not relying on high fat diets because they're not always the best for a diabetic. Lower carb meals may be a thing to look out for, but you need to take a look at your whole body and what may be right for me may not be right for you and as such you need to see your doctor find out what's going on and how much insulin you can take how to treat if you go into D or starting to show ketones if you're getting days of going low all day, why? And you need to be honest with the doctors, the nurses, the dietitians, but more importantly, you need to be honest with yourself. Don't lie to yourself because that's not going to get you anywhere. If you have the proper tools that you've discussed with your doctor, I'm not saying that the doctor's going to come up with all the solutions, but if you've worked with them, you've come up with a plan, chances are you won't end up in an ambulance. You won't have to go to emergency. You can make it through the tough colds or the flu or eating wrong if you make a mistake well that's fine but don't just sit there and try to hide and say oh no I did nothing wrong you have to admit it Admitting it allows you to take ownership. And once you've taken ownership 
of all your diabetes, then things can begin to get better. Now, taking ownership also means you need to celebrate the wins. I'm talking about, I talked about taking ownership for the negative things like you took too much insulin. You took insulin like, and then you didn't eat, like you didn't eat. Then you didn't eat. That is not taking ownership if you don't admit to it. But on the other hand, days I get 100% time and range. I celebrate that. I tell my doctor I got it. Why? Because you can't always look at the negatives in anything. You have to look at yourself as a, an individual. People like to sort us. It's our human nature. Oh, are you a type one? Are you a type two? Oh, are you gestational? What type of diabetes do you have? And I should clarify that. I'll, I'll say what I'm gonna say and then I'll clarify it. My diabetes is different from your diabetes, which is different from your best friend's diabetes. You need to be certain that you do what's right for you with guidance from your doctor. Now, I take a look here. Well, why, Mike? Why don't you discuss all things diabetic on your channel? Well, pure and simple. I don't know everything about type 2 diabetes. I have not had to live it. I know probably if I didn't have type 1, I'm probably sure I would have type 2 diabetes. But be weary, come up with plans that you can work with. Discuss things with your doctor. Don't just say, well, I saw this great treatment for diabetes online. Will that work? An example here. I saw online where my uh, sorry, not my they're talking about for type 2 diabetics of eating vegetables first and then meats and fats and then regular f food or carbohydrates will stop spikes. Could very well work for a type one. I don't know. I'm not willing to try it until I talk it over with at least my nurse or my dietitian. What's the worst thing that they're gonna say? No, don't ever do that. Okay. But be leery between the three of you, maybe the four of you. Come up with a plan for highs, lows, everyday life that works for you. Don't be pigeonholed. And it Doing these steps, you will find that maybe you overlooked something. Maybe you were doing a hell of a lot of things right that you didn't realize you were doing. Celebrate the wins. Don't be so hard on yourself. 
find out reasons why things are happening. And with that, I hope you have a great day, and we'll talk again soon. Bye. My email is mikesdiabetesworld at gmail.com. Mike's Diabetes World at gmail.com. <laughs>